Uh, again, just a perfect presentation to introduce the community to a, another important disease. And I want to just point out that uh, we're very fortunate in this community. These two diseases that you just heard about, leiomyosarcoma and multiple myeloma, have the best clinical resources and preclinical resources that exist in the world in our neighborhood. So uh, we're really in a unique position to tackle these diseases in these collaborative projects. So thanks again to Dr. Munchie and Dr. Dimitri for their presentations. And our cleanup hitter for the day is Dane Wittrip, uh, known to all of us here at MIT. Uh, Dane is the Associate Director of the Koch Institute uh, in the Department of Chemical Engineering, expertise across the board in numbers of areas of engineering, and he's going to cover uh, sort of the landscape of engineering opportunities here at MIT. In the same way that this program is a bridge from MIT over to Dana-Farber, within this building there's a bridge between basic science and engineering, and it's sort of a founding principle of uh, the Koch Institute. Um, necessarily a, a brief overview of our, our so-called assets is going to be incomplete, it's idiosyncratic, um, it's impressionistic. Um, so I'm just going to give um, some thematic overviews, and I apologize in advance for uh, potentially leaving out important uh, things that you should have heard about. Um, without question, MIT and the Koch Institute are a somewhat unique, uh, globally strong um, uh, location for materials for drug delivery, uh, founded largely on the work of this man. Um, and the particular expertise you've seen already even today, um, some of Daryl's work with the vaccine materials, which are really exciting in their ability to elicit such a, a large response um, uh, among the T cells of a vaccinated animal. Um, but then there are also a number of other groups that are doing really exciting things in the area of engineering new materials, creative new ways of, of building uh, non-biological materials that interface with um, biology in interesting ways. And so to, to pluck out just some uh, examples, in Sangeeta's group, she's been putting together multifunctional particles that carry payloads and have targeting and uh, tropism driving um, components to try and uh, drive some of these payloads further into tumors. The Langer and Anderson groups together have uh, been uh, real leaders in trying to get siRNA delivered to specific tissues and creative ways of making new materials that do uh, drive these nucleic acid um, drugs to particular tissues. In Paula's group, she's been uh, a leader in layer by layer material assembly, and it's a particular way of building up uh, uh, materials, and they've made particles and collaborated, for example, with Mike Yaffe's group um, in uh, doing temporally programmed delivery of uh, uh, different payloads, two different payloads at different times to get maximal responses. So again, impressionistically, uh, if you had an interest in uh, delivering uh, payloads from small molecules through to um, uh, uh, nucleic acids or um, uh, antigens, uh, we've got groups here that are working in that area. So now to things that are more emerging and might not have been as immediately apparent um, from the outside as a separate um, uh, uh, thrust, there's a number of us who've been working in the area of immunotherapy, um, and this is a, a grouping that, although this is nominally the engineering assets, you'll know that I've laid claim to, for example, our fearless leader here. I view his work as uh, being in the one of the best traditions of engineering, of trying to solve an applied problem and applying detailed analysis to it. Um, but this isn't an artificial grouping. We actually have a monthly uh, supergroup lunch in the immunotherapy um, area, and it's largely populated with um, students and postdocs from these groups. And Tyler's got about a half dozen people who come to this regularly. Um, our newest hire here, um, who will be arriving early next year, Michael Birnbaum, who comes to us from uh, Chris Garcia's group at Stanford Med School um, had developed technologies, biomolecular engineering technologies, for identifying uh, T cell epitopes. He's done some really exciting work in that area and has some, some uh, really interesting ideas. Um, Daryl and I have been collaborating on bringing together some of my protein engineering work in my group and his um, vaccine work to get com combination immunotherapies. Uh, we've begun to publish in those areas and, and more and more is coming. 
the idea being that taking the ability to engineer new proteins and new uh, vaccines and then using quantitative analyses to bring them together in particular ways might give you a, a, um, a better opportunity to uh, get a response. Okay, um, in the area of detection and monitoring, fairly broad, um, but you already heard today some of Michael Seema's work on implantable devices, which is sort of in the classic tradition, MIT tradition of uh, taking each problem as it comes and building what's necessary to solve that problem. Um, and so th there's one example there. Um, you heard from Scott as well. Um, and I think this is an example of where if you think hard about what limits your ability to measure certain things and push it truly to the limits, well beyond what other people were able to do, Scott me can measure growth with a sort of precision which would have been science fiction not that long ago. And then he says, what can I do with this? And he looks around and finds interesting things to do with it. And uh, um, uh, so that's in this broader area. Um, Chris, who is on sabbatical right now, so he's not here today, but has been looking at single cell phenotypes, secretory phenotypes, um, single cell sequencing. Um, Sangeeta in the area of measurement um, has these uh, clever ideas for uh, uh, assays where you inject a nanoparticle, it gets processed in different tissues differentially, and then you can have very cheap assays for urinary excretion of metabolites as a result of that. And so um, it's a pretty exciting direction. One of our newest uh, extramural members is Pat Doyle from Chemical Engineering. And uh, he started a company called Firefly. And he makes these uh, small little um, uh, 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 tablets, pill-shaped things. And then he can do um, mRNA hybridization on them. And they're barcoded for readout in a particular uh, flow cytometer. Um, and so we just, after um, chatting with him and having him come and give a talk to the, uh, um, the faculty, invited him to join as an extramural member recently. Angie has been working on um, trying to do imaging in areas of the spectrum to get better um, penetration in the IR uh, area and has published on that recently. Um, another broad area, thematic area, is in cell signaling. And so these folks are on a number of joint grants together um, and bring, bring together both the analytical computational uh, methods and sophisticated experimental methods for studying signaling. Um, something I didn't point out but was running across the bottom of these slides was I was calling out our, um, uh, our core facilities that are used particularly heavily by each of these different um, groups. And so it's a real advantage uh, to these groups that they're able to draw on these uh, resources. Since uh, Tyler gave me the mandate to talk about assets, talk about the core facility assets as well at the same time. Uh, and then as a final um, a general area, um, there are a number of people here who are making new things, not in the materials area, but in the either small molecule or protein or actually uh, circuit area. So one of our newer, uh, right before Michael Birnbaum hires in uh, biological engineering was Angela Kohler, who was over at the Broad developing their um, small molecule matrix screenings, the, the microarray uh, screen capabilities. And her research program is interested in developing probe molecules for transcription factor um, uh, uh, biology. So for example, CMIC. She's making small molecules to um, alter CMIC um, function and signaling. And uh, so there's somebody making interesting new small molecules. Uh, Rom's group has been in the past known largely for glycomics, but he's also been doing a lot of structural design of proteins lately. Um, my group does uh, directed evolution of antibodies and um, other molecules, and so making new proteins with the intent of having them uh, have an impact on cancer therapy. Uh, Hida has been very much an engineer recently. He's not here now. Um, he's uh, doing an awful lot of work with these um, uh, llama antibodies and then also with sortase. So he's uh, definitely doing a lot of interesting things with uh, new proteins. Um, and then finally, Ron Weiss is a colleague of mine in the uh, synthetic biology area who is interested in building um, response circuits, genetic response circuits in mammalian cells. Um, and uh, so grouping all these folks together in the sense that they're making new things um, uh, with this general in, in intention of uh, understanding and impacting cancer. 
So then just for the final two slides, I'm going to put in something here that's really a true story. And if we're going to talk about assets, I think it's an asset we have. Um, so you may have seen on bulletin boards, various different places, a thing like this. And I just grabbed this down off the web. Um, it says, you know, take what you need. And usually these are for, you know, trying to sell your old stereo or your car before you move. And it's a bunch of phone numbers across the bottom. But instead, people put these up and they have these abstract concepts, you know, beauty, freedom. I don't know which of these you don't need, right? But, you know, I guess you might pick one and, and pull it off. So, so this I just pulled down off the web. Well, one of these was up on the bulletin board upstairs outside my office. And I would walk by it every day. And people would pick one, they'd take one, and they'd go. And after a while, the one outside my office was just down to one. And there was only one, and nobody was taking it. So people had take, taken everything except that one. And so you may think, well, what would it be that, of all these wonderful things, that people at MIT would not need? What would it be that MIT um, grad students and postdocs would not t need? What they didn't take was they didn't take punt. Okay, this is real. I really took this picture with my cell phone. And this was up there for a long time, and people didn't take punt, and then after a while they took it down. So that's an asset we have, is that we're persistent. <laughs> my wife said nobody would believe this was real, but I really did take this picture. <laughs> all right. Great.